Anybody there? <laughs> I'll give it a minute. Maybe you guys a chance to catch up with me. <laughs> so, let me know when you're here. Say hi. I'm going to do a little bit of technology over here. Try to anyway. Judy. My muse, Judy. Hi, Kelly. All well, my local gals. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Joni. Tammy's here. Hi, Tammy. Okay, so today we're going to... Hi, Esther. Today we're going to stamp. I love stamping. Um, some people are afraid of it. There's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, all I can say is the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. It's not something you're gonna get good at if you don't even try, <laughs> which makes sense, right? Hi, Rose. So uh, there's a couple of components to stamping that, um, hi Debbie, that are consistent. They happen every time you stamp. So we're going to hit on a lot of those today. Um, today we're going to stamp an 8x8 canvas panel. And it's pretty amazing. It's a very, uh, it's done with Queen Bee. And it's a very um, classic design. I just love it. I just love it. I'm thinking of, I need more walls in my house. I'm thinking I might do a series of three of these and hang them because I just, I love it. So let's talk about what I, um, hi Lisa. Let's talk about what I built this on, okay? I found these canvas panels they're very, very hard. They're very stiff. They don't bend. And the canvas is stretched all the way across that panel. Okay, so they're thin. Uh, you can frame them. You can leave them unframed and just use it like an art panel. Um, what I love about them, and I knew when I bought them that this would happen. I'm going to bring this up real close and give the camera a chance to focus on it. If you can see there, my paint treatment, like most of the time when I paint, is not completely solid. And what I love about this is you can see the texture of the canvas, which I think is amazing. Like when you stamp, you can still see the texture of the canvas. So I really like these. Um, I worked on canvas before, but framed canvas, you know, where it was... Um, framed and then the canvas was stretched and when you start working in here and getting it wet and painting and trying to rub on transfers and everything this part gets uh, gets wavy and loose it stretches so when I found these I was like super excited about that so I bought a ton of them they're not expensive I put them in the uh, oolalashop.com they're three dollars a piece so they're there for you if you feel like you might want to want to use that. So, I did something that I hardly ever do. <laughs> I used a retired stamp, which I hardly ever do, because I don't like to tease y'all. This is a piece from a set called Granary. And if anybody wants one, put your contact information, not contact information, just tell me so in the comments. And, um... And I forgot to do something. Hold on. And I can uh, reach out to some people that I know that have like this, this really old stuff. This isn't just retired. I think this is first generation stuff because I've had it for years. So we're using it because it was perfect for this uh, project. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Now... Hi, 
and Stephanie. Okay, I'm going to pull you down next to me. And we're going to get started. This is going to be quick. This is going to be a long, hour-long thing. <laughs> I say that now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Bringing you down, bringing you down. There we go. That looks good. That looks good to me. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is unwrap my panel. Here we go. Hi, Patty and Carol. Hi, Lenny. L L Lene from Denmark. I'm not sure if I'm saying your name correctly, but welcome. Um... Hold on. I have a situation. <laughs> you guys don't want to see that. So I'm trying to move it out of the way. But I don't know if I did or not. Or maybe I moved it more in the way. Who knows? Who knows? You know me and technology. Not my strong suit. Okay. So. Get that out of there. We don't need that. So I'm unwrapping this canvas, and I'm going to give it a very quick coat of linen, what's it called, French linen by um, Home Decor Chalk Paint. I don't know where I got it. Maybe Walmart or Michaels, probably Michaels, if I had to guess. Judith, Joanne, okay, so I'm opening my linen, French linen, it's called, it's kind of an oatmeal color, I really like it, I used a lot, it's nice, hi Carol, watching from freezing snowy in Montana, yipes, or Missouri, maybe it's Missouri, um, yeah, it's not freezing and snowing here. It's actually very, very nice. The sun's out. So I'm going to take a little bit of paint. And I'm going to put it on a plate. Just a little bit. I don't need a lot. And I'm taking a chip brush. You know my cheap chip brushes that I love. Hi, Linda. And I'm just going to load up the bristles and then I'll offload a bit over here so it's not too much. And this is the part that I don't stress, okay? I don't get all nuts about this part because I want it to be imperfect. I just start doing this. And the beauty about this linen, or not linen, canvas, is that it creates its own texture, which is very, very cool. I might get this paint a little bit wet because it's a little pudding like so let's get a little bit wet and then I just kind of go back and forth back and forth I'm not I'm not overthinking this I'm not getting too nuts about what it looks like eventually it will cover and that's what I want I want a very imperfect I'm going around my edges. I want a very imperfect bit of coverage here. Because I like the way when the canvas shows through. I like that. It makes me happy. Hi, Chris. So I don't want a ton to show through, but I don't mind if it shows through here and there because after you put on you know, ink and stamps. It just all works. So that makes me happy. That looks pretty good. Imperfect, which lends itself well to this particular style because we're going to use Crackle Lure and we're going to, you know, age it up. You know how we do around here. Just age it up. Hi, Dinah and Karen, Tracy and Mar. Okay. 
I like it. That works for me. That looks good. Okay, so we're done with that. Now, I'm going to blow dry this real quick because I want my ink to, you know, get on there and dry. So, it won't be but a second. me happy perfectly dry okay Sylvie and Satu are here so as you can see here I did this um, like a granary stripe in a soft gray so I thought that would um, be a nice backdrop for this so that's where we're gonna start so I have my granary stripe and I have my soft gray ink. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Linda. <coughs> Sorry, I'm messing around with my iPad again because it's not showing me. I guess it has to be horizontal or vertical for me to see. Uh, hi, Stacy. Hi, Brenda. For me to see comments. So, yeah, it is what it is. Okay. Listen, ink, Iron Orchid inks and Iron Orchid ink pads are on sale right now in the oolalashop.com for 10% off. Okay, so that's our, our little special today. Hi, Judy. Hi, Sonia. And Brenda. Okay, so we're going to take this granary strength stamp. And I want to make sure that it's right in the middle, so I just took my... Uh, my, what's it called? Tape measure. And just lined it up across the top of the uh, canvas. But first, and I started to do this yesterday and I caught myself, so yay me. First, we're going to put a border here along the bottom because if I do this first, and then stamp over it. These lines are going to show through my border, and I don't want that. I do not want that. So I caught myself. So you gotta you gotta think this stuff through, especially when you're stamping, because I don't like the way stamps look when they cross over each other. Hi, Catherine. Um, you know, I'll mask stuff off even if I just pull off a little piece of. Um, paper towel or something you know I'll mask it off yeah Judy these granary stamps are really cool um yeah I like them a lot I'm gonna reach out to some of my fellow stockists and see who has who has them after the live so I have a place to point you guys because somebody's got to have them right well they don't have to have them but Okay, so this is black ink, and I'm going to ink this. This is a um, a border from Queen Bee. And what I did was I put it on my thin mount so I could line it up perfectly so it's not like wavy, you know, so it... I put it right along a line so I know it's perfectly straight. These little thin mounts are just the bomb. I use them for everything. How did I ever survive without it? Hi, Shirley. All right, so let's just put this up here a little bit. I'm going to lay this down. I'm trying to get it as close to the bottom as I can, but it's hard. So I do the best I can. 
It's just so hard to see down there. I hope that's right. So, anchor with one hand, press with the other. <laughs> Shirley, I knew what you meant. Shirley's asking me um, about the granary stamp. Yeah, I don't have any, you guys. Hate to tease you. Don't like to do that, but I'll try to see if anybody does have any, and I'll get back with you. So I'm anchoring with one hand, and I'm pressing with the other. I want to get nice adhesion here. And, oh, yeah, that looks great. And here's the deal. When you're stamping on something like this that has like a... The canvas has like kind of a weave to it and it's kind of a little bit porous even with the paint. So you've got to give the stamp time to to sit on here and let the uh, let the ink soak in to that kind of a uh, little bit of a porous canvas. So I take my time with it. I press a lot because I want it to be uniform. I peek. That makes me happy. That looks good. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we're going to do this in gray. And like I said, I put the... Um, I actually went over this twice because I didn't think it was dark enough. So maybe at the end we might do that. Let's just see how this goes, okay? Let's just see how it goes. So, like I said, I put this uh, um, tape measure at the top, and I know this is 8 inches, so I can see exactly where center is, so I know where to, and this is already like on a backing, so I don't need to use my thin mount, so I just want to make sure that I get this right in the middle. And what I'm going to do down here, <laughs> you can see I did it yesterday, I just used a Ross tag that was sitting on my table. Hi, Diana. Hi, Anita. And I just kind of mask that off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to have a bit of a mask there because I don't want it to muddy up, if that makes sense. So I'm going to take my, I'm, I'm going to ink this off camera because I run out of room over here. Hi, Cindy. So I'm just pressing the ink onto the, onto the stamp. And then I always kind of look at it to make sure it's shiny, to make sure I got the ink where I want it. I never trust the gray ink because it's so light. So it makes me kind of nervous. Okay, well, it's on there. Stamping is an act of faith, you guys, because <laughs> you really kind of never know what you're going to get. I mean, you can do everything right and still come up, you know, snake eyes. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to line this up right in the middle and make it as straight as I can. I think that's straight. Okay, so now I'm going to anchor it. Hi, Sally. Now I'm just going to make sure that I always anchor with one hand and I'm going to press every single inch of these because I want to make sure I get a nice, nice, even impression. And again, when you're working on canvas or material, it's a little bit different. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit different. You got to make sure that you leave the stamp on here long enough for it to really basically kind of absorb into the um, kind of almost fabric feel of this canvas. Even though it's got a little bit of paint on it, it doesn't have a ton of paint on it. So I just make sure that I'm leaving this stamp on here long enough that I'm getting the impression that I want. When you get down here and you've masked, you know, you got to press really hard to get over that little, little uh, ledge that that mask is going to make, right? Hi, Pat.
All right, I'm going to peek at this and see where we're at here. Pretty good. Let's peek at the top. There we go. So that worked out well. So there we've got our stripe and we've got a little bit of a border that kind of grounds everything, which I like. So now what I'm going to do I knew this would I knew this would bite me. I didn't clean my stamps yesterday, and now I have to clean them because I want to lay them out on the I want to lay them out on the board. I'm thinking about using this stamp, this kind of lion like kind of crest instead of this word one because I've already done the word one. So let's use something different, okay? Let's just make it a little bit different. Hi, Amy. So I'm gonna take a Kind of a disinfecting wipe and clean off my stamps a little bit and here's why because i'm going to put them face down on this canvas and any leftover ink will leave a mark and i don't want that even though i'm going to go over it with crack allure you know and it probably wouldn't show it's like eh, why, why create a problem for yourself right so i'm just going to clean these off really well and then i'm going to go over the backs of them with um uh, with alcohol so they stick really well to my thin mount so hi Carolyn hi Denise so I'm sorry I did not do this earlier but so I just use a little um, like a what are they Lysol disinfectant wipe some people use baby wipes I always forget to buy those. Oh, I'm just cleaning these off so they don't leave any marks on the face of my canvas. And they might anyway, I mean, but again, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to pull everything together with crack allure at the end. So it's not going to be, not going to be an issue if I get like a little ink mark here or there, not even a big deal. Okay. Now I need to take my little bottle of rubbing alcohol and I need to wipe off the backs of these so they stick really well to my thin mount. So I'll probably just put some on here. And I'll wipe the backs of all my stamps so they stick really well and I don't have a situation where it drops off in the middle of my canvas and makes me cry. <laughs> that would make me cry. <laughs> I've done it before, it's heartbreaking. So you just make sure the backs of your stamps are nice and clean with alcohol and they will stick like nobody's business, like they're brand new. Okay, so then what I did was I laid my design out on my board. So I think maybe we'll use this guy because I, why do I need two of exactly the same design. So let's use this guy right here. And then you have to figure out how these are gonna, right now I'm just laying out my design, making sure I have room for everything, right? We're gonna have to mask that off. I love these wreaths, I guess you'd call them. Very cool. Hi, Beatrice. Okay, so we'll mask that off. Now, what to do, what to do about this middle area here. I've already got a B on the other one. What if we put a crown? What if we did a giant crown? 
And all of these stamps are from the Queen Bee set. What if we did a giant crown? And I know there's these little, cute little, uh, I dropped one, cute little medallions. Maybe we'll do this small medallion up top. Yeah, just so it's different, you know, I don't need two of the same, two of the same canvases. <laughs> you guys, I'm having a situation. Everything's fallen. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Just, just for something a little bit different. I'll do a big crown. We'll do that. Yeah, so that that looks right to me. That makes me happy. So what I'm going, going to do is I'm going to, hi Elise, hi Amy, I'm going to take, let me make sure everything's the way I want it. Tip this up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take these two off because they're going to have to be masked. So I'm going to take these two off, set them over to the side. I'm going to take my pin mount, make sure it's clean also. Clean and dry. Hi, Deborah. And, hi, Kathy. I'm going to lay this on all three of these components because I can ink them and lay them all down at the same time. You know, you don't have to go back and do them separately. Lay it all out and do it all at once. That's really good. So I'm going to lay this down. And I'm going to press really hard and pick up those stamps. I love this stamp with the lion and the horse. It's so cool. I use it to make tags a lot. I think it's just spectacular. So now I'm going to lift that up. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to ink these in black. I usually ink this way. <laughs> I turn them over and I ink the other way. I'm always convinced there's not enough ink on something, but then I offload, so it's like, you know, <laughs> the crazy things we do, right? And then I come in and I go like this because I don't think I have enough ink. But really what you want is, is a, um, a continuous amount of ink, right? Hi, Carolyn. So I'm just making sure that I have then I can look at it like this. It looks pretty good. Okay, we're going for it, you guys. And here's the thing. If you don't like it, let it dry and paint over it. New no worries. So here we've got our our um, canvas board. I'm going to stand up so I can get this centered correctly. This is always nerve-wracking. Okay down and I've got it anchored so now I can come up here and start pushing giving everything a chance to absorb into that rather porous canvas uh, that we're stamping on I'm gonna peek <laughs> oh yeah it looks good Always anchoring with one hand, pressing with the other. And I don't want to do this. I just want to press. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Debbie. I always want to have something anchored. One hand is always anchoring and not moving. 
this guy has a lot of detail on him. So I want to make sure I go over every, every bit. Elisa's asking me about the canvas because she came in a little late. <clears throat> they're just some little canvases that I found, and they're um, they're not they're not stretched canvas. In other words, they're not um, they are stretched. They're stretched over an entire panel of hard. Uh, it's probably cardboard. Um, they're not loose in the back. You know, they're not stretched over a frame. They're very hardy so you can stamp and you can paint and it's not going to uh, buckle or get wavy. And I picked some up and I put them in the oolalashop.com and they're three dollars. They're not expensive but they're very nice. So I bought a bunch to share with y'all because I like them so much. All right let me look. Oh so good. You can peek as long as you're sure that everything goes back down where it was. You don't want to shift now. Not right now because you're almost home. Let's see, I'm just spending way more time inking this than I would if I was inking like on painted wood because you've got to give this ink time to absorb into the canvas. Oh, I think we got a really good result, you guys. Okay, here we go. <gasps> yes! Oh, that's so good. That's really good. Look at that. That's very cool. I like that a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Hi, Jolene. Dina. Hi, Dina. Hi, Francis. Yeah, so that turned out really nice. I'm happy about that. I love this little guy up here. He's beautiful. Look at the definition on that. Really, really good. Okay, now I'm going to take my wreaths. Wreaths. It's hard to say. And I'm going to measure where they need to go because I want to frame this out. And I, I'm going to mask that down there. I'm not going to go crazy masking it, you know, like I'm not going to cut out this. I'll just mask it enough to. So that, that looks good there. So what I need to do is see what I need to mask here. Okay, and you know what? Let's not do it halfway, you guys. I'm going to take, there's still some ink on my stamp. I'm going to take some of this um, postal paper and I'm going to do this. I'm going to get an imprint there and I'm going to get an imprint here because I only need these edges to, uh, to mask, okay? Alette is asking what the um, what the middle lines are from, what stamp set. It's from a stamp set called Granary. I do not have it. I'm going to try to find some people that do, and I'll get back to you guys in comments. Um, Esther, the, the canvas boards are 8 by 8 Yes, they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut it out super quick. I'm not... I just want to cut out enough of it like it doesn't have to be perfect but I don't want to muddy up my beautiful image that I have okay so there's all I'm gonna do there and I'm gonna lay it right like that so I can come in with that um, you can't see that <laughs> so I can come in with that with that uh, wreath stamp. I think it's a wreath. I don't know what you call that. Is it a wreath? So 
So this is not um, this is super on the fly just because I got such a great result there on my uh, on my coat of arms. I don't want it to be ugly. I don't want it to get all. So there, so now I've got some mask in place over those places. See, now I can lay these down, making sure the masks don't move. See where I want them to go. I like that there. Hold your mask so it doesn't move. I like that there. Yep. Okay, and then we're going to come back in and we're going to pick these up with our thin mount. Okay, where's our thin mount? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> A bunch of stuff on it still. Lee says it's a laurel wreath. That's exactly what it is. Thank you. I knew there was a word for that. So it's, it's a laurel wreath or just laurels. Thank you, Lee. Okay, so now I'm going to put my thin mount like this right on top of those and press down and pick those up. Okay. Okay, so now I've got those and I'm going to ink those. My mask moved just a little bit. I want to put them, put them back in place. I'll move this over a bit so I can ink these with black. Jolene likes that I use the Tyvek for masking. You know, back in the day, <laughs> before Iron Orchid made masks for us, we had to make our own mask. And um, I came up with that because when you would stamp, especially with paint, over paper, it would just curl up and, you know, the Tyvek does not curl up and you can use it over and over and over again. It's, it's quite waterproof and so... Once I make a mask, I have it forever. I have a whole envelope full of masks, just different little masks for things. All right, so I think those are sufficiently inked. Bring our board back over. Make sure our little makeshift masks are in place. I'm gonna stand up again. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to center this where I want it. Okay. I've got it down and I've got it anchored. So now I'm going to anchor with one hand and press with the other making sure when you get down here where it's masked you have to make sure that you press really nice and get really nice contact right where that mask meets the canvas or else you'll have a halo there and you won't like it it's easy to overlook that little spot and then you lift it off and it's like well it doesn't meet right up with that and that and that's why because that mask even though it's just ever so slight, there's a little ledge there where that paper lays on the canvas. So you've got to make sure to press hard enough that it makes contact with that area. Hi, Jennifer. Okay, I'm going to peek at this one. So good. So good. Stamping can be quite rewarding. Take your time, plan it out, 
always make sure that you've got everything anchored. Generally, you don't have to spend this much time, but because we're using a more porous uh, surface with the, um, with the canvas, I want to give the ink plenty of opportunity to uh, absorb into the canvas. And again, I'm making sure that I go over my, my mask so I get perfect contact. That looks really good. Let's see what it looks like up here. Really good. Okay. The big reveal. Ugh, so cool. Now we take these off, and now your laurel goes right into your crest, and there's no, uh, it's not muddied up, it's not stamped over everything else, which is very, very cool. Yeah, that looks amazing. Although, because I'm, because I like to tempt fate, I feel like I got one little spot here that needs addressing. Do I dare, you guys? Let me show you. Let me show you where it is. It's making me not so, so happy. See his tail right there? I'd like it better if that met perfectly. Am I obsessing? Do I need to just let it go? I don't want to let it go. I want to make it perfect. Or I could completely ruin it. <laughs> it could go either way. Mm -hmm. What to do, what to do. You know I'm going for it. <laughs> it's just how I'm built, you guys. I don't know, maybe it needs a little bit more ink. Oh, I'm really playing with fire, you guys. But remember what I said, we can always just paint over it. <laughs> paint is last word. Wish me luck. <laughs> Let it go and crackle heavier there. Lee says, too late. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> now I don't have that spot anymore it meets perfectly perfectly okay yeah that makes me happy do I have a similar situation over here I do well that's not gonna do I don't I think what happened was I didn't pull my mask back far enough so that was that was my bad hi Linda that was my bad, but you know what? You can fix anything. So I'm going to do that here also, because I can't leave well enough alone. I have to be careful not to let this side fall. Yes, okay. I don't recommend you do this at home <laughs> unless you're feeling really 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 lucky you can do it but there that makes me happier okay that makes me happier now we're going to take and we are going to crackle in gray okay because I want it to be light you know I don't like a big Heavy crackle situation. I like a light crackle situation. And my crackle is, is cut into pieces. And it's, um, <laughs> Jolene says I'm a wild woman. I'm kind of wild, you know. I just, because ah. to me, it's like it's just stuff, you know. You can do it over. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm really happy with it. I just love that stamp. And, you know, if I'm if I'm very honest, it looks a little blurry here. And I don't know if I shifted or, but I can live with that. Because guess what? Not perfect. 
nothing's ever going to be perfect. If you're waiting for perfect, you're letting that steal your joy. So don't wait for perfect. Don't wait like till you get everything just right before you start a project. Just start a project. Just jump in and start a project. Don't wait. Okay, so here, here's how I stamped this with my um, with gray on my crackalore. And what I did was I went and I just kind of did the corners first. Very, very light. Like, I don't, I don't know if you can see because you can go back over it. Very, very light. Okay. Just kind of did my corners first. And then I kind of went back in and gave it a little bit of a little bit of love all over. Shirley wants to know how do you know whether to crackle before stamping or after stamping your images? Great question. I if I'm distressing, if I use my distress stamp, I generally distress first. I'll do a whole layer of distress. If I use my crackle stamp, for whatever reason, it's just me, I come in afterwards and do my crackle stamp. That's that's just me, though. So now I'm coming in on the face of things, and I'm just, and it's very light because it's that pretty gray. It's that soft stone gray color. It's a very light amount of crackle. It's not heavy at all. And that's what you want. You don't want it to take over your piece. You just want some. And if you notice when I put it down, I'm not pressing every area. Okay, that looks really good. A little bit more in the corners. Then what I did, this is an old scrapbooking trick, you guys. Is I took my gray pad and I took my piece and I faded the edges okay so you've got your pad and you've got your your edges I took it and I just kind of did this I kind of came into the corners a little bit Can you see that you see what's happening there it's very cool it's a great effect it just kind of pulls everything in and you're just kind of rubbing it across and kind of coming in on the corners like that. I really went kind of heavy down here on the bottom because I wanted to, there was a little bit of lightness down there that, that the black stamp did not cover. So I just kind of am filling that in with gray. And then I'm just kind of coming in from the corner here and then on my edges here. It's just kind of gives it that kind of a I just found a new um, a new setting on my camera <laughs> you guys probably all already know about it it's called vignette where it kind of like softens and fades out the edges and that's what this kind of does it just kind of fades your edges out and just kind of makes everything look amazing and boom we are done that's it isn't that pretty hi Donna yeah, that's really, really pretty. I'm super happy with that. This is a very tried and true design. Um, and it's tried and true because it's gorgeous. It's just absolutely beautiful. Here's our other one. Let's, let's see if we can get them both in the same picture. Here's our other one. So they're very similar, but not exact. Um, what I really want to do is find a chair and do this on the back on the backrest of a chair like an old french chair that's my that's my quest right now i want to do that so that's it that's i mean that's stamping take your time don't let it make you crazy i like both of these so much i like them both so so much all right let's angle this up so we can say goodbye All right, so I'm going to hold these up for you so you can see them together. Yeah, maybe I only have to do two. Maybe I don't have to do three. So there they are. Really, really pretty. You see how the edges are kind of 
faded out. I've got some very cool, um, I'm going to come in close and show you some of the, how that gray ink just kind of makes everything kind of meld together when you put it in the corners. Hi, Carrie. Yeah, that soft gray just kind of goes in and softens up, put it up in your corners and everything. Yeah, this was, I did this one last night in, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. It didn't take any time at all. It takes me longer when I'm doing it for you, you guys because, you know, I'm talking. I'm not like totally immersed in it. But yeah, these turned out really pretty. I'll take pictures of them and, and post them so you can see them for reference if you need to. Um, hi, Peggy. Peggy, <laughs> my gal Peggy, Peggy finally made it. Look at you with technology, <laughs> Amy. Thank you, Amy. Amy says she's not done much stamping, but this helps her a lot to figure out when to mask. You know what? That's, that's why I do this, to help you all enjoy your stuff because it's not bringing you joy if it's just sitting there. You know, you can, you can only collect for so long and then you have to actually make something. You heard that from me. You have to actually go and make something. Okay. So if you ever have a question, I am a message away. I am tied to my phone. Okay. So I'll help you any way I can. I'll help you with your layout. I'll, you know, hold your hand virtually <laughs> while you make the leap, you know, I'm right here for you. So that's, that's what I love. I love doing that. So go to the oolalashop.com. I've got inks and ink pads um, on sale for 10% off today. And I also have the, um, the eight by eight canvas boards, canvas stretched over a solid board. And they're $3. They're not, they're not expensive. So, but boy, do they work nice. I love them. They give it all this texture and have fun, have fun, have fun, have fun. Show me what y'all do. Send me pictures and I'll post it on my page because it's our page. You know, it started out my page, but now it's our page. It's where we gather and, you know, support each other and, figure out new things. I'm really liking these, you guys. So I'm going to take some great pictures of these. Um, and I think that's it for me today. Let's see what Jolene says. Jolene says, you got here late. Where did the canvas come from? Also, I would love a granary stamp if you come up with any. any. Okay, Jolene, the canvases are in my shop, the oolalashop.com. They're $3. They're 8 by 8 canvas stretched over a very hard board, a very hard very uh, durable and I bought them to pass on to you because I love them. I love them. They're just, you know, I'm always looking for things to build things on. So when I found these, I thought, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta get a bunch of those and pass those on because they're inexpensive. Um, and as far as the granary stamp, I'm going to reach out to some of the stockists that I know that have um, first generation stock and, um, and see if I can't match some of you guys up with some of them, okay? So if you're looking for the granary stamp, tell me so in the comments, and then I can, you know, either pass you on to somebody else, and you can get one, or somehow we'll figure it out, and we'll get your granary stamp, because it's really good. Judy says, do you have the Queen Bee stamp in your shop? But, um... I have two, and I'm pretty sure you have it already, so <laughs> go look in your stash. All right, y'all, that's it for me today. Um, I'm going to go do my thing, and I'll see you guys later. Leave your questions in the comments, and uh, I'll help you out where I can. If you ever need any help, give me a uh, private message me. I'm always around, and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out virtually, okay? Y'all have a great one. I'll talk to you soon. Happy creating.